When I was growing up, we had this board game in our cupboard called Cluedo. It's a board game which involves six people playing it, and each person who plays takes this character in the game. And the game is a murder mystery, so you've got to work out who the murderer is in the game. The board put on the table is a map of an old mansion with a number of rooms. There's different weapons that are in the game. And you only win the game when you go around the map, collect enough evidence to work out where was the murder committed, what weapon was used in the murder, and who is the guilty character in the game. Once you declare who the guilty character is, you win the game. Now, in many ways, Cluedo has been played in our society on a really big level, much bigger than a board game. It's been played right throughout all history, right throughout all cultures. And the game works like this. Who is the guilty people in our society? The most simplistic answer people come up with, it's the people who are in jail. The murderers, the thieves, the corrupt. If they have been convicted by law and they're in jail, they are the bad people. The good people are the people who are outside the jail who have no criminal conviction. They are the good citizens versus the bad criminals. And that simplistic way of trying to work out the good versus the bad is the way that many people think. Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 is about to turn the tables on everything everyone thought to that point. He talks here in verse 21 of the topic of murder. He says something as if he's almost trying to redefine the rules of Cluedo. Jesus says, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. With those words, Christ has got everyone understanding what he means and everyone would agree with Christ. Yes, of course, if you've murdered someone, you're certainly subject to judgment. And then Jesus drops the bombshell. Verse 22. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka is answerable to the Sanhedrin, but Anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. It's a shocking declaration. Because Christ has said that the evidence for who the murderer is, is almost in the hands of everyone. Every person can think of a time when we've looked at someone else with anger with contempt, and we've used language to describe that person in that demeaning sense. And Christ says, if you have done that, you are under judgment. You are in the same spiritual prison as someone who's committed a physical murder. It's so hard to to get that, but we need to understand where Christ is coming from here. He's coming from the standards of heaven. He's coming from a place which he describes as paradise, a place where there are no tears, there is no hurt, no one is being ill-treated or or misrepresented in any way. Imagine if you went to heaven and found out that there was a guarantee that you'd never be murdered. You would live there for all eternity, but no one will ever be murdered. However, you will have people who will verbally abuse you. You will have people who will yell at you. You will have people who will speak to you in such a way you will walk away feeling feeling completely demeaned. You will be treated with contempt. You will have people that will berate you so strongly that you will walk away as if you were just emotionally killed. But you'll never physically be killed. If that's what heaven is, that's not heaven. And Christ points to the fantasy of, and the fairy tale that each one of us looks forward to one day of what paradise, of what glory would be. The, the escape of what we want from what we experience here to the hope of what we might have one day in the future. But that requires us to accept the standards of heaven. You know, as we get more angry towards someone and that anger increases, we find that simultaneously the value we have of that person will decrease. 
That's why, as you see, our anger increases, our language towards that person and the way that we describe them also will decrease our value of how we see them. And eventually, if your anger gets to such an extreme point, the value we have of that person will hit zero. And once it hits zero, the gloves are off. And murder is on the cards. Christ is trying to point out something really important here. He's not really talking so much about murder. He's talking here about the issue. The issue is, as we go around the board game of life, we are spending our time looking at other people, thinking they are guilty and we are innocent. They are the ones who have judgment over the head. We are completely free from judgment. But Christ says, no, it's not. The standard of heaven is beyond all this. And if the paradise you are looking forward to one day in the future beyond this grave is to exist, you need to understand the standard is not the standard of this world. We don't need a lawyer to get into heaven because we're all fallen very short of the standards of glory. We need a saviour. We need to identify that we need help. And if there is any way into glory... It means standing before God, accepting the truth of who we really are, putting our hand up and saying, yes, I'm guilty as well. And Christ says at that point, we understand the cross. We understand the words of Jesus where he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father through me. Grace and forgiveness and Christ entering into us and restoring our soul is the path that leads to glory. And Christ who comes into people brings the standards of heaven into us and he begins to transform us. The odd thing about the game of Cluedo when you play it with friends or family you've got the board game set up and you've got the characters in your hand which you play but there's quite a reasonable chance in the game that the character you've picked is actually the murderer. And to win the game of Cluedo, you have to first accept that the guilty party is not just the people around you. It may well be you. <laughs>